Hello everyone, it's Mike Les and I am at Schmidt Machine Company in Upper Sandusky, Ohio. And they have a new Versatile 335 front wheel assist tractor here. And we are going to walk around this tractor, check it out, and uh, I'm going to tell you all about it. Versatile has five models of front wheel assist tractors currently, from the 260 all the way up to the 365. So there is a model 260, a 290, a 310, the 335 you see here, and now a 365, which was currently the 360. Uh, the 260 through the 310 are basically the same tractor, and when you get up to the 335 and the 360 or 365, they are just a little bit different, uh, and I will point some of them differences out here. So right now we're talking about the 335, and everything I'm telling you here will also... Uh, be the same on the 365 so the, this is powered by a 9 liter Cummins engine and we will go ahead and take a look under the hood here but just a couple things while we're up here our front weight bracket there is a toolbox mounted in the front here and this has the Dana suspended front axle as standard equipment so the, on the big two uh, front wheel assist tractors the Dana suspended axle is standard, and this is an option on the 260 through the 310. All right, of course, this has the front doles, and uh, we're going to go ahead and raise the hood here. So uh, just right here, undo that latch. I'm trying to do this in front of the camera. All right, so here's a look at the uh, coin package up front. So we got our. Uh, uh, All right, so up front here we have our cooling package. So we got our uh, fuel cooler, AC condenser, uh, radiator, air to air cooler, and transmission hydraulic cooler up in the front. And walk around here, just look at a couple of the serviceable things here. Um, of course, here's your uh, def tank. So these uh, new tractors are full tier four final, so they do have diesel exhaust fluid. So that's where you fill that. There's your fuel. And here is our fuel filters, our uh, water separator and our primary fuel filter. Uh, dipstick to check our engine oil. If we had to add engine oil, we're changing it, gonna add it right there. We have our uh, coolant filter right here, engine coolant filter right here. Air filter is serviced right here. You can remove the filter right here. And this is the, again, the nine liter uh, Cummins diesel motor, full tier four final. We'll just look in here again at the Dana suspended front axle. Another look there. And we'll walk around to the other side of the tractor now. All right, that is our engine oil filter right there. So that's really the only service item on this side. Of course, you can see the AC compressor, alternator, starter, and so forth, turbocharger, whatnot. And there's our coolant tank up top of the engine. If you had to add coolant, uh, there is like a radiator cap up on top there. And there's also a low coolant sensor. You can see right in that spot there. And here is our battery disconnect. So it does have a battery disconnect if the tractor is going to be setting idle in the off season and stuff for any length of time. Good idea to turn that on. And over here is uh, our hydraulic and transmission filters. So this tractor has the high flow hydraulics, uh, puts out 75 gallons per minute. So that has two filters for the hydraulics and one of these is for the transmission. We can uh, move this step out of the way here, flip that up so you can get your filters in and out easily. And just a couple other things, hydraulic pumps mounted up here, driven off the transmission and that valve assembly you see there, that's our transmission solenoids and so forth just look inside the wheel weights and one of the differences on the 335 and 365 over the smaller 260 through 310 the axle was bigger in diameter and also the tractor is overall four inches longer it is the same uh, very similar transmission it's a full power shift transmission 16 forward and nine reverse speeds but this transmission is a bigger series so it has some bigger bearings bigger counter shafts same in the rear end so that is the difference so it's not a matter of taking a 310 and bumping the horsepower up the the rear end and transmission is heavier so just a couple things in the back there the draw bar uh, power takeoff cover and here is where we can check our transmission 
and hydraulic oil through that sight glass there. Uh, if we had to add hydraulic oil or transmission oil, that's done right here. And there's a look at our remote. So this tractor has six remotes. That's part of the high flow hydraulics, 75 gallons per minute, and it comes with six remotes. Here's our zero return or case drain for uh, some of your implements with planters and stuff where you need a zero return. That's plumbed in right there. And just look at the three point hitch and whatnot. There's a work light back here. You can use the put down at your point down at your draw bar up close. And that can be turned on and off if uh, you don't want that one. What not? Uh, do have uh, three point hitch controls in the back here on the fender, and you also have a you can bump this to rotate your PTO if you're hooking something up and your splines aren't lined up. You can bump that with the tractor running, and that'll rotate your PTO. All right, on the dealer's lot here, this is hooked to a Hineker strip till bar uh, it's not been used yet either but uh anyways i didn't want to unhook it for this video so just left her hooked up now let's go around and we'll get up inside the tractor did that with one arm uh, since i'm holding the camera with my other hand up in the cab here and this cab is pretty well laid out the same I had just done a video in the spring on one of the new four-wheel drives and the controls and everything on all versatile tractors are laid out almost identical so largest cab in the industry uh, buddy seat or training seat whatever you want to call it that can be flipped up or you can flip it down to set whatever you want to set there cup holders there is a uh, power inverter here can turn on and off cigarette lighter five volt charger electrical 120 electrical outlet all right and then on the console here of course we have our shift lever got a button here put it in gear forward reverse top button is up shift bottom buttons down shift our throttle we have our engine cruise control here and our end of row command, three point hitch controls right here, our remotes, six remotes, power takeoff, on and off, and of course we've got our auto steer button, uh, front work lights, rear work lights, uh, lights for driving down the road, just your front two headlights, front wipers, rear wipers, wiper delay, flashing beacon, diff lock, turn our hydraulics on and off, uh, this tractor has a suspended front axle, so you can turn that on or off right here. Uh, reversing fan, if you had the reversing fan option, that button is here. The reversing fan cycles every 20 minutes, but if you wanted to do it more often than that, you could press and hold that, and that would also reverse the fan. Uh, front wheel assist button, you can run an automatic or full front wheel assist. Override button, uh, this tractor has an automatic engine shutdown, so if you would lose oil pressure, overheat the engine, or low coolant, it'll shut down on you but let's just say the tractor overheated for some reason and you need to get to a safe spot you can hit that override and that'll keep it running until you get the tractor moved to a more desirable location and then we have upshift and downshift buttons right here where we can skip one two or three gears at a time per shift here all right uh new in these tractors and all versatile tier four final tractors is going to be the new touch screen monitor and i'll show you more about that when i get the tractor started up here uh climate control this has the automatic climate control here so fan speed hot or cold blend ac on you can also push this down and uh, read your outside temperature of course the radio comes with cd player uh, music port you can also get xm satellite in here and uh, bluetooth heated mirror and adjustable mirror switches right here on this cab post you also have more uh places cigarette lighters 12 volt accessories whatnot and back here i'll just point out a couple things uh we can open our back window of course and we got controls and stuff back here behind the seat uh 
this tractor has not been to the field yet, but it's got a couple of the accessories in the boxes here. But our fuses and everything are located under here. In this panel, we have a uh, foot throttle, and that can also be set to a decelerator. Our, uh, we have a switch down here at our foot to uh, adjust our steering wheel. And the steering wheel also telescopes in and out. All right, let's close the cab door here. And to start this tractor, our park brake has to be locked. So park brake up, clutch pedal has to be pushed down, gear shifter in neutral, PTO off. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the key on. And it's a good idea to wait till the dash powers up. You see versatile voltage screen comes up, then go ahead and crank. So now our tractor has started. So to drive our tractor, of course, we would have to uh, release our park brake down here and simply push this safety button in, push the tractor into forward, let out on the clutch, or you do not have to use the clutch. You could literally just throw it into gear and it will modulate itself as it goes or needs to. Uh, this bracket right here, in case you're wondering, this tractor is set up auto steer ready from the factory. And when factory tractors come auto steer ready, they have a bracket in here to mount your auto steer screen. All right, go ahead and release the park brake. And tractor shows neutral five. Uh, fifth gear is the default gear. You can change that. You can change your forward and reverse default gears uh, through the screen here. That can be done easily, but factory default is fifth gear. So if we want to take off in a lower gear, I can just hit the downshift button. And right now it's in neutral one. I can give her a little throttle, throw the shifter into forward gear, and the tractor will go ahead and move on its own. So now it shows forward one. I pulled it back to neutral. Uh, going through the screen here, it defaults to the voltage screen. We also have an indicator showing us our diesel exhaust fluid level, suspended front axle is on, engine RPMs, engine coolant, miles per hour, and fuel gauge. We can also read that digitally. Uh, wheel slip set at 20%, you can adjust that. Uh, engine oil pressure, right now sitting here idling, we're at 32 PSI. Also this indicator up here is showing you that it does have a radar gun. That is an option uh, if you do not see a radar symbol up here you probably don't have that option on your tractor okay here's our speed uh, and engine rpms and then we have a tractor performance monitor we can go through and set an acre counter we can check our fuel usage and uh, so on here is a fault code so if we actually had a fault code in this tractor you would have a book that would light up in this area you could go into this screen read your fault codes pto speed I'll just flip the power takeoff on just to show you. Just push down on that. And green light is telling us our PTO is on. Our PTO right now at idle is turning at 580 RPMs. Turn that off. Okay, this tractor has 15.75 hours. You can also set service alerts in here. So it's got service one and service two. So if you change your oil, and you want to change it, say, uh, you know, 100 hours later, 200 hours later, whatever, you can set that in there. You'll get a warning for that. Uh, like the grease fittings and stuff on the front axle and so forth, they're every 50 hours. So you could actually set a 50 hour interval in service too if you wanted to. Uh, distance, this is for our wheel speed calibration. I won't get into all that with you. And then uh, we have a calibration screen where we can go through for uh, lighting calibration. Uh, tire size adjustment, zero slip calculation, steering angle calibration, uh, scraper controls, transmission calibration, suspended axle calibration, and back to lighting configuration. So you can do a lot of your calibrations and so forth through the dash here with uh, the OK button, the menu button, and our up and down buttons. All right, here is our DPF regeneration. You really should not have to mess with this. As you're using this tractor and everything, uh, this tractor should do its own uh, exhaust regeneration on its own automatically. 
you really do not want to go in here and inhibit this that's turning the system off uh, unless you were working in a building or something this is one you do not want to mess with if you had to do a manual regeneration you would actually have an exhaust light that would come on and start flashing at you that is very rare that you would ever have to do that but if you did you would go into here hit ok it says forced regen and you would go through the process that is a parked or stationary regen but like I said it would be very very rare that you would ever have to do such a thing okay here is our software so if uh, version information this is a question a lot of times when a dealer calls me with a problem I need to know what software is in the tractor I have them go into this screen uh, transmission oil temperature is 66 degrees and we're back to battery voltage okay we're gonna go ahead now and look at the new touchscreen monitor hopefully uh, the camera doesn't leave off too bad of a glare here for you but a lot of the stuff that I showed you over there you can read here as well so it's showing us we're gear neutral one our miles per hour engine rpms uh, engine oil pressure engine temperature hours on the tractor transmission temperature battery voltage uh, right now we got about a half a little over a half a tank of fuel 55 percent and our def fluid level is at 86 percent you can go in and customize and do setup and stuff in this as well in this screen also you can get a camera on here so if you had cameras back on your implement you could go through and watch them on here and this screen is also ISO bus compatible so just go ahead and hit custom uh, we can do areas uh, on screen one let's go to screen two screen three so we can set up different things here we're gonna go back to home now let's go to the setup screen so we go here and this is going to tell us our software and the model number and all that so we can change our settings from English to Imperial uh, metric whatever all right tractor performance monitor so we can actually go in here we can read uh, how much fuel we're burning per hour or per, per area uh, engine load different things there EHR screen we can go into this screen and set our hydraulics so this tractor has uh, six remotes so right here is valve number one, valve two, three, and four. So you can run these in three different modes. You can use a time detent, which would be the clock you see here. Uh, valve number one is set up on time detent. Uh, number two is set on manual, so you see a hand symbol there, so that's manual. So you're just going to pull your lever back, so I'm going to pull back on number two. And that activates that and then number three is set on continuous flow which like you were running a planner mon uh, planner motor or something that needed to run continuously you would set that so as soon as you kicked your hydraulic lever on it would run continuously till you hit it back to neutral now if we wanted to change that all we need to do is touch and hold this so I'm gonna hit this timed one hold it whoops Okay, so we can now go in here. We can set our flow. They're set to 100%, so all the way up, we can adjust that down. So you can adjust this both ends. So if you want it to raise faster than lower, or lower faster than raise, you can do each side. And you can also set your timer. So if you say it takes five seconds to lower your implement, but it takes 10 seconds to raise it or whatever, you can go ahead and speed that up, slow it down. And then here is our buttons. We can change this from continuous flow, manual, time detent, or to go ahead and go in and set the timers. So it's all pretty self-explanatory, but uh, like I said, my biggest fear as I'm recording this is hopefully there's not enough glare between the camera and this screen that you can see what I'm doing here. All right, I'm going to go back to the home screen. And uh, just for the heck of it, I don't have anything hooked up to the ISO bus, but just hit that. Uh, okay, it's not finding anything because nothing's hooked up to it. So let's go back to that. So that's a basic overview of what the new screen. So all versatile uh, 2018 models, anything that's tier four final, will have this screen, this monitor in it. All right, just a couple other things. Uh, there are several vents for the AC and the heater. We also have. Uh, sun blinds in the back window 
and in the front. And we're going to just go ahead and take this tractor for a little bit of a spin here. Also, I guess one other thing, uh, you got your inside cab light that you can set uh, on all the time or have it open you know turn on when you open the door or just turn it off altogether and I'm gonna go ahead it's getting a little warm in here okay get some air going here also uh, over here on the right hand side you can open that window to get in here for serviceability or whatever also be emergency exit and you could actually pull that pin right there if you wanted to open this all the way up. Uh, you have this monitor bar here, so if you had other monitors uh, you wanted to mount in here, controls, you can mount them to that bar there. And this screen can be adjusted. It is on a ram mount, so you can adjust this up, down, slide it back and forth, uh, mount it any way you want it. All right, it, it rained quite a bit here last night, and we are uh, recording this on... November 2nd, so we're getting late into the season here. I'm not going to be able to take this tractor out to the field and holding the camera here. I'm not going to drive it real fast, but uh, anyways, we'll take it back over and park it where it was on the lot. But uh, like I said, shift lever here, just going to push in on this button, throw it into gear, and off we go. Give it a little throttle. If I want to upshift, I just hit that button downshift and we can also shift right to reverse without using the clutch pedal it will modulate on its own so you do not have to use the clutch pedal to change direction the computer uh, transmission controller is going to modulate everything automatically That covers everything on this tractor. Uh, I did not write a script on everything I covered here. I just kind of winged it off the top of my head. Hope I didn't miss any information in uh, giving you everything I know to the best of my ability. But remember, things are, are always subject to change. So before operating one of these, always refer to the operator's manual. I'm going to shut the tractor off here and get out now. And as I'm editing this video, I realized I forgot to go through the three-point hitch controls. So that'll be another video for another day. couple other things I guess I could point out here is this does have, uh, besides the fuel gauge in the cab, does have a fuel sight line and underneath here there's our radar gun. So we have fuel tanks on both sides. We fill from the left hand side of the tractor but there is a crossover tube here as well. And that concludes this video. Next time we'll try to get one of these out in the field for uh, in-field uh video so thanks for watching and hope everybody enjoyed it